Center for Academic Communication, and this is Active and Passive Voice. We'll look at how these are constructed in English, when to use the passive voice and when to avoid it, and how to find and fix it in your writing. Generally speaking, the active voice is simpler, more direct, and more clear, and is therefore preferred by many disciplines. Passive voice uses a be verb with the past participle of the main verb. Past participles of regular verbs are the same as their past tense forms. Irregular verbs have different past participle forms. This chart shows all the possible verb tenses for the active and passive voices. As you can see, most of the passive voice examples are missing a piece of information that might be vital to the reader's understanding, who is doing the action of the statement. Sometimes this information is essential, and sometimes it isn't important, or it's not the most important part, and this is the key to understanding when to use the passive voice. So, when should you use the passive voice? It can be used when the doer or agent of the action isn't known or is irrelevant. In the first example, the important point is that the crop circles exist and that they were made in the 1980s. Who made them isn't known here, or we might want to avoid saying we think aliens made them. In the second example, we're not interested in who is building the bike lanes. It's understood that builders will build them, and the important part is that they are being built and where. You can also use passive voice if you want to be intentionally vague about who's responsible for an action, or if you're stating a general truth. Alternatively, you might wish to emphasize the object of the action rather than the subject, if the thing being acted upon is your main topic. Here, for example, the inventor needs to be credited, but he's not the most important thing about the topic. Finally, if you're writing in a scientific genre, you might actually be using passive voice quite a lot. It's often preferred in lab reports and research papers, where the important part is what actions were taken and what the results were. Now that we know when it should be used, when should the passive voice be avoided? When the actor or actors are known to you and they're important, leaving them out can be vague and create confusion. It can also reveal incomplete research or sources that should have been acknowledged. Passive voice constructions are also often overly wordy and indirect. Therefore, in most cases, if you can use the active voice, do. So, how can you spot passive sentences and weed out unnecessary passive voice? You can look for forms of the verb to be, either with a missing actor or with the preposition by. There are also tools now that can help you find passive sentences. In your Microsoft Word options under Proofing, set your preference to check for grammar and style. Also, check the Readability Statistics box. Then, in the options for grammar and style, make sure Word is checking for passive sentences. It will then begin flagging these with an underline. When you run a final spelling and grammar check, you'll end up with a set of readability statistics which tells you your percentage of passive voice sentences. Here, I've checked this script and my percentage is 37%, which is quite high. If you're not writing about passive voice, this number should probably be lower. Finally, you can also edit your work by checking all the verbs that end in ed. A common error is to use a simple past tense verb without a be verb when you meant to use the present tense and the passive voice. In the example, it's not the scholarships that are providing something. They're the subject when they should be the object of the sentence. In the corrected version, the subject is missing, but it's clear that scholarships is the object, not the subject. Okay, that concludes active and passive voice, where we looked at how the voices are constructed, when they're used, and how to detect and correct them in your writing. Thanks for watching. To learn more tips and tricks to help improve your academic communication skills, visit the University of Victoria Center for Academic Communication website for workshops and other resources. You can also book an appointment with one of our tutors by clicking the link in the description below. Good luck and see you soon.